Hi friends, I'm TTB. Welcome back to Mech Warrior Online. And guys, welcome. You all get to be the guinea pigs of a new format called TTB is watching you. This format will have friends and viewers send me their Mech Warrior Online or Mech Warrior 5 gameplay, and then we will be watching that and commenting on it. So we'll get, point out ideas, we'll point out cool stuff, we'll point out potential opportunities for improvement what people did very well or maybe they make may, well they maybe made a mistake it's going to be pretty cool i think um as always this is experimental content i'll leave it up to you guys to let me know what you think of it but let's get on with it today we're going to have a cataphract Ilya muramets from our community member magno who's been uh, very active on discord as well also spotting the beautiful ttb shirt huh 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 description below so as you can see we're running this beautiful cataphract it is decked out the bazoo it's even got the tusks and a little bit of like a punk spikes on the shoulder and i believe we'll also get to see uh, the uh, the mech build uh, in the get-go so let's go ahead and press the go button and watch this video all right right now we have the build triple ultra ac5 We've got three medium lasers on top of it. We have one, two, three, four and a half tons of ammo and the light engine 295 to power it. Light ferrofibrous in the armor, double heatsinks, of course, and endo steel structure. Armor mostly up front. Um, there's a little bit of a weird discrepancy between back armor, where they, the side that has more weapons has less back armor. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I see three back armor on the right torso, four in the left torso and CT. Maybe that's an oversight. Um, and four armor in the cockpit. My recommendation would be to go higher in the cockpit armor. Cataphract is very easy to headshot. I would always aim to have at least 31 total health in the head. That is uh, structure plus armor, because that keeps you safe and against a double Gauss face shot or double heavy PPC face shot. So 31 is the magic number. Double heavy Gauss kills anything in the cockpit if it hits with a double hit at close range. So don't worry about that. All right, moving on. All right, here we have the skill tree. I see a couple of skill trees that uh, aren't doing anything for this build, so that might be an oversight from the previous build. For example, the uh, Gauss Charge nodes, uh, a lot of the armor points and structure nodes. We've got a little bit in operations to run them a little bit more cool, and then auxiliary probably the double cool shot with cool shot cooldown. Okay, let's get this show on the road. And to go and to so, what the guys are doing here, they're dropping apparently in a four man cataphract Yamura Mets Lance. And uh, it will be randomly escorting a friendly mech. The king? The king crab apparently is going to be the target of the uh, escort. So I love a, creative uh, ideas like that, guys. Like, um, you could just drop in your group and you could just, just run around and do your own thing. But literally formulating a battle goal as in protect the VIP, keep the king crab safe. Um, that is a cool idea. Uh, of course, it really depends very much on what the king crab does now. If the king crab plays smart, he's got four. Four. German four, not American four. This will get you killed in certain movies. This will get you beers. So, uh, they've got four Iamuro mats, which are super tanky mechs for heavies. And they will be protecting the king crab. So, if the king crab plays is smart, he's always got his own little murder ball with him. We'll see how that turns out, though. Of course, we don't have a magic crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, the King Crab is currently in Charlie 5. We'll also be looking a little bit at the map over here to try and see uh, what kind of map movements uh, the Lance has, what kind of map movements uh, Magno is making right here. And uh, we'll have a look at uh, also like potential areas where the enemy is coming from. So I will be pausing the video at some points just real quick so we can talk about some, some cool things that I might notice or some, some tactical advantages that I might see. So far right now, nothing bad happening. They got a scout in Delta 5, they got a scout in the center, a scouts in Delta 4 up front as well already. The enemy team has just grabbed Kappa, so you know there's some targets over towards the Echo 3 area, most likely. <laughs> Echo 3, Echo 4 is where we would expect targets now. Now we see a contact, Echo 4, so right in the center. Huntsman up front, you have 10 builds, nothing too crazy. You can also see right here, um, as always, if you take these top positions, you always will see that um, you find enemy targets across from you. So you need the proper range to deal with that. He has the weapons right now, but as you can see from the target reticule, it's about 650 meters uh, to reach targets that are on the other catwalk. So bear that in mind. If you're up there with medium lasers, you can't do much at that range. All right, here come uh, the Ultra Auto Cannons. Now, the Cataphract is a Knuckle Dragger, so you have to be a little bit careful. It's really doing uh, yourself a disservice if you're trying to shoot targets that are very close to a ledge, either up and down, because you're going to hit 
with those low mounted weapons into the ground. So uh, keep that in mind when you're shooting. Yeah, our friend here seems to be fine. Uh, I think the shots just barely go over the target, which is nice. Um, okay, going down, nice drop shot going in. The King Crab is still here. Okay, let's look at the map here for a second. Let's look at the map down here for a second. We see a Theta. We know that there are a couple of enemies. Delta 5 right now. We've got two teammates there. You can assume it's clear. And Echo 4, you see nothing. There's a UAV between Delta 3 and Echo 4 that shows one target right now. But if you see this on the map, you can assume your targets are going to be Echo 5, Echo 4. Nope. More targets are coming in, especially from Echo 4, Echo 5 as well. Now some targets getting marked. And of course, in the center. And surprise, surprise, you got an assault mech straight around the corner. Which might be dangerous, but let's see what kind of build this gentleman has. Four UX 5s against the Cataphract with the medium lasers. I think the Cataphract is on even footing there, but uh, he has to fall back here. And wisely does so, because if he doesn't fall back, he's going to get attacked from both the sides and from the front as well. So, good move to go backwards here. Uh, actually, pushing into this right now, I would not recommend. Ooh, nice Daka going on here from the other Cataphract with the Rack Cannons. But um, pushing in too deep, I would not recommend, because you're going to be opening yourself up against... As as I said to three sides. Um, big mass of enemies now in Echo 4. Also, the enemy has taken Delta 5. If you look on the, the bottom side right here, they've taken Delta 5. So um, expect some fight from behind as well as from the front. You gotta make a decision now as a team which direction do you push. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily push center because you don't know what's gonna happen here. So we'll go up against a Grasshopper up front. He's very damaged and he's dead. And we see a Grasshopper down low, and Annihilator up top. Atlas engaging, very close to overheating, and we shut down. Uh, highly recommended, guys, at the beginning of every match, override engaged. There's also a cool shot here that could be used. Uh, we see some targets fairly close. We know about the Annihilator and the Grasshopper around the corner. Uh, Atlas is fighting him together with another EM Muromets, with the other two coming in as well. And let's see, pushing forward now. Atlas DDC, lots of structure, not so much armor. Both sides just open on the Annihilator. I think he's pushing a little bit too far right now. He's getting some good Daka in though on the targets. There's also a Fafnir lurking over there. Um, let's see, 56% on the Annihilator. Uh, as well as on the Yamura Mets, who is now at 49%. Okay, so you're at 49%. Now you've taken quite a bit of damage and you're quite hot. Uh, this is the point where I would not push forward anymore. Because, uh, as you can see... Still, there's only an idea, yes, but he's still got two medium pulse lasers and he's gonna do some damage to the side torso and potentially rip that side torso apart. That's Atlas on the side still has 80-ish percent. I would let him push right now. You don't have the armor anymore. The only thing you're losing right now is the uh, side torso, which gets your heat containment totally in the gutter. And you also lost a uh, couple of weapons there. So, yeah, I would have let the, the Atlas push if possible. I, I know that's an easy decision to make, especially in the heat of the combat, because you want to fight him, you want to make things happen. But uh, that would have been the better choice, because the Atlas can take a couple shots. You, on the other hand, at 33%, you cannot. And um, look at the map right now, guys. There's one known enemy uh, right between Delta 4 and Echo 4. Um, and every, everything else is not visible right now. We knew there were a couple of dudes in Delta 5. Uh, moving towards Delta 4 around that, that central area. But Theta in the central area, you don't know exactly what's there. And you're basically almost one shot CT at 33%. This is not a push I would advise uh, to make. I would have taken a couple of stacks back and tried to support the Atlas because you still got 42 rounds for the UAC 5. So that's 200 potential damage plus two medium lasers. You can do some damage. You can help the Atlas quite a bit in taking down some targets. But pushing and leaving the push right here, uh, I think will be risky. Well, that's more damage in. That is the Mauler. I wonder where that Fafnir went. I see some ECM and Assault, so, uh, yeah. Uh, probably over there is the Fafnir, as well as some other targets, and you're dead. Um, so, yeah. Um, brave push, but uh, not really needed right here. The Atlas could have taken the uh, fire. The match ends, I believe, at this point. We don't see the rest of it. 11 to 8 kills. It ends on caps. Uh, performance here was two killing blows, one KMDD, 550 damage done, 600 taken, and four components destroyed, which is an absolutely solid performance on uh, the Cataphract EM Muromets. Let's have a look at how the rest of the lands performed here. So yeah, uh, two Cataphracts very solid, the other two Cataphracts a little bit further down in the damage done, but overall five guys killed in one lance, that is not bad. Uh, the Kid Fox Purifier on the team, together with the Fafnir, ended up doing a little bit higher damage. Plus, the Atlas DDC fell later on as well with 755. So, that all in all, it's some, some very solid performances on that team. 
On enemy team, they had a Jäger mech that was going nuts, as well as one of the grasshoppers, almost reaching a thousand damage. Well done as well. That was an entertaining video to watch, especially I liked the idea of having this like cataphract group that tries to protect a target. Uh, unfortunately, VIP, the VIP didn't know how to use a gun, so uh, a king crab unfortunately fell a little bit short and also died fairly, fairly early. But guys, let me know what you think of this format in the comments down below. TTB, big TTB is watching you, yay or nay? Who knows? Have a good one.